Welcome. Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We're trying to make sense of this crazy Arizona real estate market. And boy, there's a lot of moving parts out there today. Good morning, Jackie. Good to see you. Um, busy weekend. Lots of speculation. And we're going to go over some of the numbers here that, that we're seeing live this morning, what it means to the Arizona market. And uh, good morning, YouTube. And see if we can make a little bit of sense of it. But one of the things is uh, very clear that things are just not very clear. And so we'll go ahead and start with uh, this headline here this morning. It says, Treasury yields dive as banks angst, seen causing Fed to stand pat. Well, we'll talk a little bit about that, but take a look at this. They are right that yields did dive, but now they're going back up. And I think volatility is going to be the name of the game for a while. Now, yesterday, top of the morning, Keenan, to you. So, good morning. Boy, all the old favorites are back here. Except for the commentator that uh, last week said, all you realtors use fake data. So, um, I spent the weekend at the real estate manipulation meetings so that we could, you know, kind of massage the numbers. So, I'm all prepared this morning uh, to show you the, the fake data. Um, I thought that was one of the dumbest comments I'd ever seen. Now, the Federal Reserve met yesterday and on a Sunday. And the last time they met on a Sunday was before they decided to take the overnight rate from 2% to zero. And uh, and so, yeah, that's what's going on, Sean. <laughs> Thanks, Jackie. Good morning. Um and when it went to zero, every lender in the country was getting phone calls on Monday. Can I get a zero mortgage rate? It's like, no, no, that's not what it means. <laughs> and uh, all you fake realtors use real data. Yes, I'm fake. Uh, you got that part right. So um, so anyway, so they met yesterday. And to, to kind of roll it into a little tiny, easy to understand ball that even I can get it. Basically, what they decided to do was there are these things called... Uh, swaps where you can trade your yen for dollars um, or the Swiss franc for dollars. And you can do it um, on a temporary basis and then swap it back in a week. Well, the central bank met and said, instead of letting people do this once a week, let's let them do it every day so that we can see if we can add more liquidity and fluidness to the market. And it seems to be happening. That Sunday meeting rattled a lot of cages. You know, it always does when they when they meet. It's like, oh, my God, now what? So now you've got all this speculation. What are they going to do? Are they going to raise their rates? Not. And there was a big uh, other Sunday news coming out here. It says Credit Suisse rescue by their actual rival bank, UBS. So they, uh, they're they going to take them over. I think it was $3 billion. And uh, so that uh, kind of calmed the market a little bit. We're sitting here looking at total assets. This one, I sort of misinterpreted a little bit to mean that the central bank was adding more liquidity. But what this is, and I want to thank a YouTuber for pointing out to me, and I did some more digging, and the, this is the amount of money that the banks are borrowing from the central bank so that they can remain solvent and liquid. I don't want to use the word solvent, but they're going to the central bank and they're borrowing more money. So is it quantitative easing? No. Uh, we're going to get there. Well, that's what everybody's trying to guess. Lack of liquidity in the smaller banks. They're getting really conservative with lending. If you have a HELOC, don't assume it'll be there for long. That is true. I did see some uh, stuff going on that said uh, probably uh, you're probably going to lose your line of credit. Now, What's it mean for Arizona? Let's dive into that a little bit. Well, before I do that, let me, I'm going to touch on something else here in an article that I, that I read. And where can I find this? Um, this one here says, what's next for the Federal Reserve? And it says here, um, both stocks and bonds sank in 2022 as the Fed aggressively hiked rates in a bid to bring the surging cost of living under control. So if your stock portfolio has gone down, you have no one else to blame but the Federal Reserve, especially when you read this article. While inflation has come down this year, it remains high, and not that's the person they're talking about in this article, anticipates it may wind up being stickier in the second half of 2023 when year-over-year -year comparisons become more difficult. As a result, the rate of inflation could end the year in the range of 5 or 6%, he said. 
the market is largely expecting the Fed will announce Wednesday that it's raising its benchmark by a quarter of a percentage point to set a target of 4.75 to 5. Fed funds futures on Friday indicated a 62% chance that that's what they're going to do. So as we watch the numbers and everything this week, remember that most of the volatility is going to be today and tomorrow. And the markets are already saying 62% chance that they're going to keep that quarter point move. Now, when things went to hell in the handbasket last week, the consensus was they can't afford to raise the rates. But now they've added more overnight swaps. In other words, they can do this every day instead of once a week. And uh, Jackie says they really need to adjust to 4% inflation, just my opinion. Um, you know, gosh, I don't know where this is going to land. Small banks, <clears throat> regional banks got really stung when um, when the rates went up so so fast and so they lost their they lost their margin and some of these small banks did really stupid things so that's that's how that shakes out um i could go on and on but in our market and i was going to show you what's going on here in my seven day moving average what we're seeing here is that our sales are kind of you know they dip down a little bit but they're kind of hanging in there flat at about 3101 on a seven day moving average and new listings continue to go down, and they've gone flat over the weekend. So nothing alarming there. As we look at more data for the Phoenix market, you can actually see that our sales per month is climbing. Now, obviously, if something were to happen to the banks and there's a big credit squeeze and things are rough, then these numbers could change. But I'm going to share some things with you in just a couple of minutes that kind of make you go, huh. Um Here's our monthly average sales price. You know, here we went to the peak. We came down here and we're coming back up. So those of you that, you know, that were saying, well, are we going to crash? Are we going to crash? You know, I don't know. Maybe we already did. Um, it's, you know, time will tell. It's always easier looking in the rearview mirror. I think they'll ease when it hits 33.5. I agree with Jack and they need to adjust. So that's where we're at. That There's those fake numbers again right there. We uh, we got in at our, our weekend manipulation meeting and we said let's make this green arrow go up and all in favor say aye and so we did and then these are the other fake numbers here that inventory is declining now i i say this in jest but i do see comments that go oh, I, I see a lot of houses for sale well compared to you'll remember there was a one youtuber that took a seven-year average of our listings in phoenix and said that we are 200 percent above our average well you have to throw out that three-year period 20, 21, and 22. You have to, because we were down here. And so you have to compare it over, I'd go out at least 15 years to determine what the average is. And the average for our market is about 27,000 listings. So being at 13, we're about 50% below where we probably should be. Um, Jackie, you missed that meeting. Um, so I will send you the invite weekly manipulation meeting. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, here's a shocker to you. JP Morgan chase launches mortgage incentives, but wait, I thought lending was tightening and nobody can get a mortgage and it's really bad. Well, they've come out and they're having a thing called advice pilot. It's starting in Arizona in mid April encouraging Chase customers to give Chase a second look on a mortgage loan. It has 1.8 million customers in Arizona and 78 million nationwide. If we can't match or beat the price, we'll give them 200 bucks. So they're saying we can match everybody's rate. Now there's rates and there's fees. So make sure you look at both of that when you do that. Um, so they, this advice pilots to let Chase customers know that it's home lending advisors aren't just loan officers. They're able to provide advice to customers. So they are also launching a $5,000 grant at certain parts of town. And uh, uh, plus a Chase DreamMaker loan would allow eligible buyers to qualify for a loan that would allow them to put as little as 3% down to the purchase price. These DreamMaker loans also offer flexible credit guidelines and income limits. So as you're out there looking um, and you hear people saying that credit is tightening, this kind of flies in the face of that a little bit. 
Bernanke's come out with a target level inflation pricing, which may increase by only one to two points. However, PAL has not adopted yet. QE is not their only tool. I don't see quantitative easing starting until things really fall apart. Pat directed that meeting. Um, he was too busy with the St. Patrick's Day stuff over the meet over the weekend, uh, Terry. So we couldn't uh, we couldn't have that uh, him join in. And he is a wealth of information. Hey, Long Dan, good to see you here. Now the other thing that's interesting, as we're looking at these numbers, and I'm gonna drift off here for just a second and i'm going to pull something over for me to look at here while i'm talking to you you won't see it well you do you can't see it um take a look at this kb home stock is up exp was up a little bit this morning zillow is up pulte group is up all of these building and uh, real estate companies are up this morning why well they're anticipating lower rates. Now, if we get lower rates and we're already seeing prices coming up and if the banks remain liquid and if the Fed really has to pull back even more, um, I don't know. I, I think it uh, obviously bodes well for real estate prices, does not bode well for first time home buyers hoping that prices come down. But if you can get a big break on your mortgage rate, that's not a bad thing. Um, so yeah, I recommend uh, checking out Dan's Dan's YouTube page for those that don't know. He does really does a deep dive on the mortgage rates and stuff. You probably have a special out today. It's the Fed's job to manage fractional reserve banking, including diversification of investment portfolio. They were asleep at the switch in San Francisco. I hate to say it. Getting higher offers from Zillow on my home. Are they still offering to buy? I thought they were out of the buying business. In fact, I'm glad you brought that up. Let's take a look here because this is what their activity has been. And uh, um, I buyer purchases very few and far between compared to a year ago, down about 95%. Zillow is down 100%. Um, it's interesting that you're getting offers. I'd like to know more about that. Redfin is down 100%. Offerpad down 100%. They didn't buy anything last month. Open door down 93% iBuyer sales are also down more than the overall market. They're down about 62% below 2022 levels, although Open Door has recently stepped up sales, especially to one institutional buyer. They don't mention it here. I'd like to know who's buying them. Flips are down 50%. Okay, so some areas are more healthy than average. New homes are barely down from last year. I thought they were crashing. Uh, Pre-foreclosures are up 34% but from a tiny number to another slightly less tiny number. Remember, large percentage of a small number is still a small number. Wholesale transactions are down only 13%. Normal owner-occupier transactions are what is sustaining market momentum. Momentum, I can't talk. Coffee, please. Um, normal owner-occupied purchases of newly constructed homes are surprisingly strong, and given the weak permit counts, New homes could be in short supply very soon. That is interesting. Um, Daniel says we should close 7 million this month. Demand is still there. We're getting two to four contracts a day. Thank you, YouTube. I think um, we're not seeing it slowing down. We're, well, we did, and we, we've slowed down, and it's, it's kind of stayed there. Um, I'm not seeing everything um, explode. I hope we don't. Uh, I think I uh, uh, we don't come to that. Thank you again, my friend. Um, um, I'll invite you to the next uh, mortgage manipulation meeting. Um, what I want to watch for tomorrow is more volatility. As we look at the MBS dashboard right here, again, uh, we're seeing mostly up, very little down. Uh, I can see the movement here in live time. It says here the Today's rate trend is negative. Now, earlier in the week, last later last week, it was all positive. Rates were coming down. Remember, they were about 6.69. Now they're 6.55. So we're seeing it going negative, which should tell you, again, that the market's saying, well, I guess they're going to go up a quarter of a, percent, quarter of a point. We might as well absorb that. Now, I'm not the bond guy. Dan and Pat are. Um, so... Didn't have Pat on the show Friday. Um, he had a lot of uh, St. Paddy's Day stuff to do. I was kidding, 
him. I said, you needed to take time to iron your beard. In fact, I didn't hear from him all weekend. And uh, talking about open door, I got to share a success story here with you. We have been nego negotiating an open door home in Maricopa for well over six months. We've got a very patient buyer. He wants a home, but he doesn't want it at their price. So we shot them an obnoxiously low offer right off the bat. And they, and you know, they're very polite and they go, well, Rick, we're way off. And I go, okay, well, we'll come back to you. Um, and we knew because of the condition of the house that once they got a contract that it would fall out and we were willing to wait like, all right, let's see what happens here. And sure enough, they got a contract full price. All right. Sounds good. And it fell out. So we circled back and said, Hey, hi, Rick here again. Um, yeah. Hey, we're going to shoot you another offer here. And, uh, and, and they rejected it. My buyer said, okay, well, we'll wait. Sure enough. Get it inspected. It falls out. So we shoot them another offer. Now we've gone up a little bit incrementally, but we just were not going to pay this list price that they had. It was too high. And so we said it to them and they go, well, we have another offer. We'd like your highest and best. Now you all know how I hate that. I hate highest and best. Um, uh, they are partially responsible for the high prices. I'm drifting off here just a moment because because they were only about six percent of our market. But in some parts of the valley, yeah, they were they were obnoxious. But my buyer said, "I'm staying put." The offer price I gave him, I'm I'm staying put. Well, they accepted it, and but you know what? We we got it inspected, and we really didn't like what we saw. The repairs were even greater. We anticipated it needed underlayment in the entire roof. We didn't factor that into our price. So we went to them and said, you know, we need we need some concessions here. We need about 20K. So we gave them all the receipts that we had coming. She goes, Well, I don't think we're there yet. I will meet with the sellers, which always cracks me up because open door, you are the seller. Um, I don't know. They, in other words, they get with their pricing team. So you have five days after you send in your inspection report response for them to reply. And on day five, they said, yeah, Rick, we agree with your price. Uh, let's move forward. And six months. So it was uh, a fun, fun journey. It was fun on a couple of fronts. One, because the buyer was probably the most patient guy I've ever, I've ever worked with. <laughs> and uh, we said, well, no, we're going to stick to our guns. I said, all right, I'll do what you want to do. Let's do this. And we just would wait it out. And uh, and we got kicked out and said, well, okay, they'll be back. In fact, one of the statements that I made to Open Door, I go, well, um, we'll just circle back and see you in June. <laughs> she goes, no, we don't want to do that. I said, I got a ready, willing buyer wants to take this off your hands. You've had it on the market for 178 days. Uh, I'm sure you're getting tired of it. And uh, And she was very nice. Uh, we kind of we got on a first name basis, so it was a lot of fun. So anyway, uh, that was kind of how my week. I got to make that phone call on Friday. Hey, guess what? So that was a kick. I enjoyed the heck out of it. So tomorrow, let's watch for more volatility um, as this thing's bouncing around a little bit. That's going to be the first chart we're going to go to tomorrow and see what's going on. And Wednesday's anybody's guess. So the Fed is actually having a two day meeting. They're meeting today. They're meeting tomorrow. And then they're going to announce what they're doing on Wednesday. Will the announcement be a big nothing burger and a uh, low ball seller all day? Um, or is it going to be news that nobody anticipates? I don't know. Um, Kelly here says, I've had nothing but greatness with Open Door. On the buying side, I have. I have, I have worked um, with them quite a few times. And you know, they answer their phone and they all, when they tell you they're going to call you back at a certain time, they're right on the money. Um, you know, there are there are a little sticklers when it comes to repairs, but you still get to do all this back and forth with them. They're not carving a line in the sand. And and sellers probably need to kind of look at that a little bit because sellers, sometimes when you don't see what you what you like, you tend to just say, I'm I'm done. And, uh, and that's not good in this market. So if you don't like the terms, your agents need to start having conversations. And agents, if a buyer comes to you with terms you don't like, don't slam the door. Just say, hey, like Open Door says, we're a long way off. 
let's have a conversation. Let's move forward. Even one of the other transactions I have, the agent and I were having a really good chat the other day, and she goes, I appreciate how smooth this has been. Uh, we had a lot of conversations on the inspection period. Um, I did not like the long list that was about slightly smaller than the book War and Peace, and, uh, and we had to whittle that down. And we finally had to draw our line in the sand, but politely. I had to politely say, look, um, I can't go back to the seller and ask him for anything. I just can't. If I do, he's going to want to put this home on the market. So you got to let the buyer know that's where we're at. Um, so um, it worked. And so we got that deal, deal done. And I don't believe that the agents are your nemesis. So sellers don't treat the buying agent like that at all. My buyer bought an open door home. They might be failing and going back bankrupt but they were great to work with. Yeah, you know, they didn't make money when the market was hot, so I don't know where this is going. Um, they they bought way too high. I have a good friend. She sold her house to them for $680,000. She had a realtor friend that said, um, he says, I, I thought we could list it for six forty. dollars He said, sign that as fast as you possibly can. She goes, the easiest transaction I ever had. But um, for a while there, they were hitting you with so many fees. You know, they said they didn't have a commission, but they had a 7% service fee. Um, they were just dinging people on the buy side. And uh, when they decided to walk away from that model, they said, well, what the hell? Let's lose $1.3 billion and see how that goes. Uh, Carvana is the same thing. Carvana offered me all kinds of money for my Nissan uh, a couple of years ago, maybe almost three years ago, when they were having a shortage. They couldn't get the inventory, so they started paying more, lowering their margins. I couldn't believe what they were offering me. So I wanted to upgrade my truck. And uh, I go, what? You're only going to give me 3500 bucks? Now, I bought a truck uh, from them, and that transaction was really smooth. And it's it was, except for the delivery time, it was supposed to be delivered Saturday. And then they rescheduled it to Tuesday. And I said, no, Tuesday won't work. Um, do it Sunday. They said, okay, we're going to give it to you Sunday at noon. Oh, wait, no, we're back to Tuesday. I said, no, Tuesday won't work. Let's do Monday at 6 p.m. Now, they haven't changed it yet. It's early. We'll see what happens. So we'll have, hopefully, my new ride in my driveway today, and uh, I can start to get to work on it. So everybody have a great day. Take on the rest of the week. Boy, tune in tomorrow, will you? It's going to be another interesting day. Take care.